Since Microsoft has released Windows 10 officially this past week, we're going to go through and do a quick tour of the operating system and go over some of the changes and things that may help ease the pain of transitioning from Windows 7 or 8 up to Windows 10 and certainly from the earlier operating systems of Windows Vista and backwards. So one of the things that you'll notice right off the bat are the icons on the desktop will look a little bit different. They've gone to a little bit more of a flat look starting to appear more like a mobile operating system and mobile uh, operating system icons as well as uh, tablet and some of those features that uh, you'll typically see on mobile devices. In the bottom left hand corner you have the start button which resembles a uh, more of a Windows 7 and earlier Windows start button and instead of all programs you now have all apps as everyone has gone from calling programs and applications to apps and this is kind of a mesh between Windows 7 and Windows 8 for the start menu on the left hand side you have your uh, username you're logged on as and your most recently used programs as well as any recently added programs and you also have a link to Windows File Explorer your settings which we'll go into in a little bit later uh, and then the power button so you can sleep, shut down, or restart your computer. And you can click on all apps, which is the equivalent to the all programs menu you used to have in Windows 7 and earlier versions. And the programs are now grouped by uh, numerical and alphabetical order. On the right hand side of the start menu, you'll see the tiles, which used to be the metro interface of Windows 8 that a lot of people did not like. And you, in the Windows 10 Preview Edition, you used to be able to click a link and make this full screen. And they've changed how you do that, and I'll show you how to do that in a moment. In each of these groups, you can click this little uh, set of lines, and you can label these groups if you'd like for organization purposes. You can right-click on these tiles, and you can unpin them so you can make them go away. You can also change the size. So if I want to make this a wide icon, I can make, I can do that and make it a little bit easier to access. And you can also pin or unpin from the taskbar. For example, if I want one note down here on my taskbar, I can right click on it and click pin to taskbar. And if I want to remove it from the taskbar, taskbar I can unpin it. You can also do that with your programs over here on your start menu. For example, if I want Adobe Act Red 8 Professional on my taskbar down here at the bottom, I can right click and select pin to taskbar. Or I can also right click and pin it to start and it will show up over here on the right hand side. Down here on the taskbar you have a couple of new icons. One is the search button and you can bring this up and search both your system for programs and files as well as receive selections to search the web. So if I were to search for the Windows snipping tool, as I start to type the programs it finds will show up at the top and as you can see it says it's a desktop app. It also gives you suggestions for keyword searches. So if you click on one of those it will open your default browser and by default uses Bing to search the web for that topic. Over here on the left you can click this little gear and you can access your settings for your search. And one of the things that Windows 10 has built in is Cortana, which is Microsoft's digital assistance. So if you log in as a Microsoft account, a lot of people are confused about this Microsoft account. It's really similar to logging into an iTunes or an Android Play Store with an email address, only it's integrated with Windows. So if you switch to a Microsoft account, it's going to log you into Windows as that email address, as well as log you into the Microsoft application store. You can click this button and provide feedback to Microsoft. So if you have ideas on how to improve Windows or things you like or don't like, you can send that information to them. And you can also include a screenshot for reference. The next icon is, or, is your task view. And you can use it to access the different programs that you have running at the time. And one of the nice features in Windows 10 that you did not have in previous versions are virtual desktops. So if I click the new desktop, I can set up multiple desktops and switch between them. For example, on the first desktop, if I'm running Chrome, and then I go to my second virtual desktop, and perhaps I want to load Microsoft Word, and I go back to my task view, I can switch between those virtual desktops 
without having to deal with minimizing and maximizing those applications. And if I want to close a virtual desktop, I simply do so, and it will consolidate your applications down to the one desktop. As you can see, I utilize the taskbar a lot for my frequently used applications. I ne never really miss the start menu in Windows 8 because I've always used the taskbar to uh, create shortcuts for the programs I use frequently, frequently and I rarely use the programs menu anyway. But if you right click on the taskbar, you can select properties and you can do some modifications here just like you can in any version of Windows. For example, I prefer to use the small icons so that they can all fit. However, if they are small, too small for you, you can turn on the larger icons for an easier view. You can also set some navigation and toolbar options to appear on the taskbar. If you right click, you can also lock the taskbar to prevent yourself from accidentally making certain changes to it. You can also select to show the desktop. So if you have many programs running, if you right click, you can click show the desktop and it will minimize everything instantly. And that is the same function you have by clicking on this little bar on the far right hand side, which will show your desktop. Now over here on the right, you have your traditional Windows system tray and clock, except you have a new feature added and that is the Microsoft Action Center. And the Action Center is another area where they're starting to move towards looking like a mobile operating system or a tablet. So down up here at the top, you will see notifications for things like Windows updates that have installed and possibly need a Windows reboot. And down here at the bottom, you can switch to tablet mode, which puts everything into a full screen mode. This was uh, similar to the Metro interface back in Windows 8, where you could use this with a touch screen and make your icons larger and easier to work with. And I can go back here and turn off tablet mode to get back to my desktop. The connect feature will search for wireless display and audio devices on your network. And you have Microsoft OneNote integrated so you can take annotations and share them with others. Virtual private networking or VPNs are used to connect to networks from the internet such as a workplace. You also have quiet hours for turning off notifications and location services for GPS use for mapping. Uh, I believe it also uses your internet connection as an attempt to geolocate you if you search for restaurants and things for a better experience. And I've saved the all settings button for last because it is a little bit more in depth. It has a lot of your settings that you would have found in control panel. Now Windows still has the traditional control panel. If you right click on your start button, you can access control panel just like you always have. However, again, they are moving towards the tablet look and feel and have migrated a lot of those uh, features into the settings menu and started to consolidate those there. If you right click on your start button, just like in Windows 8.1, you have access to a lot of things directly, such as programs to, and features to install and uninstall programs, your power setting options, your event viewer for troubleshooting uh, with your event logs. You rarely have to go into that unless you're actually having a problem to troubleshoot for, and you have to go in there for a reason. Uh, your system will bring up your system information, which can be handy, especially if you have to call technical support. A lot of times you may be asked what your process or your memory and your Windows version and whether you're running a 32 or 64 bit version of Windows, as well as the type, whether it's a home professional or enterprise edition. And in your system uh, application, you can also get to your device manager to work with drivers, your remote settings for remote desktop access. For example, a lot of times I'm upstairs on my laptop and I want to access my uh, PC. I can do so by using a remote desktop and not have to walk down to my PC to actually uh, access a program or a file. You also have access to network connections, your disk management, uh, computer management, which gives you a lot of those in a consolidated console, so you can access a lot of these system management features in one place. You can run a command prompt or an administrator command prompt. A lot of times if you have to run a command at the command prompt, it may not work unless you're running as an administrator level. This helps prevent things like viruses and malware from getting on your system without acknowledging it. Of course, you have a direct link to task manager, your traditional control panel, file explorer, search, run, your shutdown functions, and again, back to your desktop. If I open up the icon that says this PC, this is the same as in previous version of Windows where you had an icon that said 
computer or my computer where you have access to your hard drive and your file systems as well as all your libraries, your documents, pictures, videos, and so forth. One of the things I did notice right off was my toolbar was missing. So if you click this little down arrow, it will turn on your ribbon toolbar with the larger icons for ease of access. And of course, in the view menu, you still have the same options to view details, lists, small, medium, and large icons for thumbnail views, as you've always had in Windows. Another feature they've added in the Windows taskbar view are these little blue lines under running applications. So in previous versions of Windows, the icons were kind of hard to tell if you had something open or not. They showed a little, kind of a little three-dimensional looking icon, and if you had three or four in a row, it was kind of hard to tell what was open and what was not. So they've added this little blue bar, so you have a better visual to be able to see what is running on your PC. One of the big things a lot of people have been curious about is the Microsoft Edge browser. Microsoft is phasing out Internet Explorer. And so they've replaced it with Microsoft Edge. Now, the interesting thing is if I click on search and I type in Internet, Internet Explorer is still in Windows 10 as a desktop application. But I suspect that will be phased out over time and will not be upgraded from this point forward. Microsoft Edge is a new browser that has, a, again, a layout that is a little bit easier to use on touch screens. Even if you don't have a tablet, a lot of uh, laptops now are coming with touch screens so you can utilize these features. So the buttons and navigation are a little bit larger, and they do have a few new features in the browser which are kind of handy. So if you click on the little lines here, you get access to the panel that has your favorites. You can also pin articles to a reading list for a later access, and of course your history. And here's a nice little shortcut to your downloads. A lot of people were frustrated in the past when they would download files they were unable to locate the downloaded file. So this is a shortcut that will take you straight to your downloaded files. This next button is a nice feature for annotation. So if I go to a website and click that button, I get some new features. So I can use a pen tool to circle. I have a highlighter. I can also delete those annotations and I can put notes on the web browser. And I also have a snipping tool so this will copy it to your clipboard, and you can save this to OneNote, your favorites, or your reading list, or you can share it directly through an email or a OneNote file as well. And of course, your third-party browsers like Firefox and Chrome all seem to work fine in Windows 10. Hopefully, this video has been helpful to you as a quick introduction to Windows 10, and uh, the way the upgrade works with Microsoft is the for Windows 7 and Windows 8 users, uh, the upgrade is free as long as you upgrade within the first year after release. So up until July 29th of 2016, you can upgrade for free. Now, I do have uh, some recommendations before you upgrade that I'll put a link to that video on the screen now. And you can go watch that video uh, for three tips on what you should be doing before you upgrade or during the upgrade process to ensure your upgrade goes smoothly. So hopefully this has been helpful to you, and I thank you for watching. If my video has been helpful to you, please subscribe to my channel. And after you subscribe, be sure to click the little gear and check this box so that you'll receive an email notification when I upload a new video. You can also help support my channel by making a small donation on patreon.com slash Troy Young.